Hi guys, this is Pestilli and welcome to another Escape from Tarkov video. In this video, I am testing these new shotgun ammunition. Now, I do four tests with the armor and then two with face shield. Uh, I'll explain more about why I picked face shield over helmet, but overall, uh, I'm going to go through each one of them. There's four different armors that I test for each round, and then I'll go into testing each of the four rounds over all the armors, and then we'll compile the results at the end. So guys, without further ado, let's crack straight into it. So the first round we actually test is the Poliva 6U slug. Now, I test three slugs and a buckshot. Um, I go through the AP-20, the dual Sabo slug, the Poliva 6U, and the Flechettis. I like calling them the Flechettis, um, which is the buckshot. Now, I start with this one because it is sold from Jaeger level 2. It has a fairly high penetration power, as well as armor damage is quite high. So I was actually quite curious on how long it would take to actually kill someone using this one. As I go through the armors as well, you will see that I will shoot from the lowest to the highest. The lowest tier being the Packer, which is a, a class 2 armor. Then the 6B23, which is class 3. The I think it's 6B13 is the, the name of the armor, which is a class 4. And then I use the Assault Gen, Gen uh, 4 armor, which is a class 5 armor. Now, starting off with the Poliva 6U, I was pretty skeptical about how this would work. I wasn't really sure. But with the Packer, it drops down in just one shot. I was, I was kind of thinking it would be that. It's a large amount of damage with a fair bit of pen. It should drop it pretty quickly. The next one being the 6B23. This one actually took five shots to get through, which was a little bit surprising. I would have thought this would have had a little bit more power to it. Now with the 6B13, that took seven rounds to drop, which was actually quite surprising as well. So already you could tell that this round is not a very strong round against armor, which like honestly, out of the start, I would, I would have said it would have been fine. But anyway, moving on. So next we have the Gen 4 Assault. Now this one took 11 shots to drop. So this, in my opinion, this round, it's useless against armor, but Wall City does have a lot high amount of damage. It, it does have its purpose. Low end, it's, you can buy it, Jaeger 2. You know, I wouldn't be picking this one anyway for my raids. Now with every single test that I do, I make sure that the armor was uh, picked up, checked, see if it, make sure it was damaged and all that kind of stuff. So uh, same with the helmets. I made sure all the helmets were hit in the face shield, not the actual helmet itself. And uh, I made sure all my players that were test dummies, they were always on full health at the start of the raid too. So moving on to the Flechetti rounds. Now for me, uh, this one was pretty much where I thought it would sit. It actually has a, it was a buckshot for starters. So it has eight projectiles per shot instead of the slugs, which are the other ones we've been using. Its armor damage is 26 and its pen power is 28. So, and then each projectile can do 19 damage. Now, <clears throat> this was all shot at very close range to ensure all pallets were to hit the armor. I actually did some testing a bit later on to see how much spread was over distance. And pretty much, if you were shooting someone within, say, 15 meters and you aimed at the center of the chest, all pallets would hit the chest. So that's it's pretty accurate, to be honest. Once you start getting a little bit further out, then it, it changes up. But anyway, moving into the actual hits. For the packer, this was pretty straightforward. Just one for that one. Then we have the 6B23. That is a one as well. The 6B13, this is now we're up to the class 4, that was a 2. And then the Gen 4 arm, which is a class 5 armor, that was down in 4 shots. So it is a very devastating round. It's available at Jaeger level 3, and it can drop people really quickly. Now obviously this was, like I said, close range, and so the spread wasn't very much at that stage. But uh, I can ensure that all the shots were on the armors, and uh, they were on full health at start, ensuring good testing hopefully. Well, with the next one, it's the dual Sabo Slugs. Now, these are meant to have two projectiles. And with the such an extreme armor damage of 65, the pen power being 17, I actually thought these would be really effective. I wasn't really sure, obviously, where it would sit. So that's why we did the testing. Um, it took me a little while to get this guy to stand up and put his arms up in the air. Sometimes it takes... It's like, uh, I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Anyway... Now, when it came to the Packer, this was the first time the Packer didn't drop in one shot. It actually took two. And to me... That is already a fail for a round. Uh, next to the 6B23, we're looking at five shots to get it through a 6B23. Then we have a, a bit of a, a lull period while we wait for a guy to be able to stand up and stand still. Uh, and we have some interference from the scavs. Nothing to worry about there. But yeah, so the next one, the 6B13, that took a total of five shots as well. And then we have to finish up with the Gen 4 Class 5 armor, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 shots to drop him. Pretty shitty round, if you ask me. It's a, a Jaeger level 3 round. I wouldn't be wasted my money on it. 
and I definitely uh, would just not even bother with my, wasting my time with it. I actually thought that, um, that one would have been the best round in the game, just because it was two projectiles with such high armor damage, but I was completely wrong. So next we have the AP-20 slugs. This is what I would say, well, when I was going into uh, the testing, I would say is the best slug in the game with the 32 pen, 65 armor damage. It is a slug with only one projectile, but it has 164 damage. This is like hitting a truck with a bloody pointy tip on it. It's it, it honestly, I thought it would be between this and the, the Sabos to be the best round. Um, but the testing was pretty much where I expected it. Starting off with the packer, this was a simple one shot. The 6B23, another one shot, a 6B13. This one took a total of four shots. And then the Gen 4 Class 5 armor, this one was a total of five shots. And then when you compare all the rounds that we tested today against each other, you can see that there's two standout rounds. Now, if you're going to use a buckshot, the Flechettis, it's a 1, 1, 2, and 4 for the Class 2, 3, 4, and 5 armors. And then AP-20 is 1, 1, 4, 5. Now, the AP-20 is a slug and it'll be a lot more accurate at range, whereas the Flechettis, they're actually going to be quite ordinary, say probably past 30, 40 meters. But if you do, uh, like say you are going to a map like Labs, Factory, they can be pretty effective. Um, I did try and do some factory runs with them, but I don't know. Raiders are very like reactive to, and they're very quick at acting at the moment. And you want to be able to drop them in one shot. And if they had a helmet on, sometimes it was a bit like sketchy. If you would hit them in the helmet, be able to drop them in one shot. So speaking of helmets, let's move on to helmets now. With testing of helmets, I came with to the conclusion that if you're wearing a helmet um, and you're not wearing a face shield, the buckshot's more likely going to get onto the face if you're going to go down that direction. And it would kind of make the whole testing of the the flechettis kind of wasted. Uh, with a slug, it'd be slightly different, but you could probably compare the visor like stats compared to a helmet stats anyway, and get a similar result. Maybe my might bit of bit, bit of change due to ricochets, but overall it should be pretty similar. So the four face shields we tested was the ZSH, which is a class three face shield, and it actually has 50 durability. And people ask me why don't I test the fast MT face shield? Well, that has a lesser durability than the ZSH face shield. So I thought it'd be better just to go with that one because whatever you get on that, it's going to be less than that for the fast MT one. Then we got the new ZSH equivalent helmet, which is a class four face shield. It actually has a quite a high durability. I think it's like 50 or 55. And then we have the Alton face shield, class five face shield, and then the killer face shield, which is a class six. Now with this, we had the AP 20 rounds first up because that was what was already loaded from the previous round. And then we moved pretty much straight into it. So the results were pretty much what I expected. I did a test fire here uh, just to make sure I had the point of aim right. And then... Uh, so what I do is I aim at the actual, pretty much the top of the visor, so it hits square in the face. And we actually didn't have any issues with this at all. So we actually got every shot to hit the visor. So the first two, they were down in one. The Alton took five in total. We got four down and then got interrupted by a scav that was coming up behind. Um, but yeah, went down in five. And then we move on to the killer face shield, which is a very strong face shield. Um, in my opinion, it's, it's you know the best helmet in the game. Uh, that took a total of six shots. Now, the reason why the Killer Helmet is the best helmet in the game, being a Class 6 helmet, is uh, it's it's great with the Class 6, but they've obscured your view, which is how they balance it out. Now, as you see here, I do pick up every single helmet check that all shots were clean on the actual face shield. There was no like hits on the helmet. It was all pure on the face shield. You would test to make sure there's a crack on the visor. And uh, yeah, every single shot was nice and clean. Worked out really well. And then we can move into our next test, which is the Flechettis. Now we're testing this one. I had to make sure it was close enough that the like the spread wouldn't hit the helmet. So um, I actually got fairly close with the shots. Now shots don't take change in damage by distance. Like you could be at 300 meters away, and if, it, if the round hits, it still hits with the exact same damage. There's no damage drop off over distance. So that's just something I should make you guys aware of. I also ensure that everyone wore armor just in case a pellet was to hit low, but we didn't have that problem at all, which was quite nice. So right here, I do a couple of test shots to make sure um, the spread and the point of aim is where I, I expect it to be, which is only just lower than the crosshair. Um, I just double check here, but it's pretty straightforward. So the ZSH, that is in one shot. We go across to the slightly better ZSH, which is two shots, the Alton, which is a total of three shots, which is slightly better. And then the killer, which is a total of three shots, which is slightly better again. And as I did with the last one, I looted all the helmets and then checked to see how the visors looked. 
So as you can see here, I'm just doing the quick loot and then I end up chucking on all the helmets. And I ensure also that the damage was entirely on the visor and not the helmet as well, which is, uh, in my opinion, an important thing because if you're spreading some of the damage to the helmet, then the, the results won't be as accurate as you could hope for. But yeah, so that was all insured. And then you get to see the fun part of being what all the visors end up looking like. So I'll start doing my summary here. Now, this really does come down to personal preference. Uh, with the flechettis, you will get through those face shields faster overall, um, as well as our armors faster overall, but you need to be at close enough range. If you're going to be using the AP-20, it is a really good slug round, and you will you can use it out to whatever ranges you want. Now, the velocity of the round is quite low, um, which means you know if you are shooting at someone like 100 plus meters away, you might need to aim slightly above them or even really above them, but it can work quite well if you wanted to do some like sniping. I would only suggest using these two rounds if you can afford it. That's pretty much my, my, my takeaway from all this video. Uh, when it comes to shotgun rounds, you can drop people that are geared really quickly uh, if you're using these rounds. And if they're, you know, even if you're not the most accurate, the flechettis will still shred them a bit pretty quick, uh, shred them to bits pretty quickly. So that's what my takeaway would be from this one. If you're not very good at aiming, use flechettis too. That would be the other point. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching another video. I don't normally do many armor testing videos, but this question came up a lot and I thought, hey, let's just do a quick test of it. Anton does or used to do a lot of these videos. I don't think he's going to do them anymore. Hopefully I'm not uh, stepping on his grass, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah. Hopefully you guys learned something from this. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for future content. I am trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I want to get that little plaque thing. So let's see if we can get there. If you're not subscribed, would appreciate the support. If you ever have any Tarkov questions, you can feel free to hit me up my live stream or down in the comments below. And lastly, I'll see you next time. Shout out here to everyone who got involved uh, helping out with the testing. Being a part of the chat, you know, it's something you guys don't have to be a part of, but, and it does take a fair bit of time. This took about an hour and 10 minutes to, of our day to be able to test it out. Uh, so yeah, special shout out to all the people involved and thank you so much for the, uh, the help.